Thank you uh, for your kind invitation and introduction. And uh, put the, the touch. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that works. Well, so I have uh, brought you to discuss some research we had. We have to switch the gear. I mean, you already heard all those inorganic uh, solar cells, wonderful science. So I'm trying to do, from an organic chemist point of view, tell you how to design the, the polymers, which will show high efficiency. But the most important thing to me, at least, is trying to find out what is the structural property relationship so that you can do those designs, synthesis, in more rational way. So that's the point. Uh, I'm trying to brought, uh, bring to you. And uh, you don't want to see too much design, uh, devices in my talk also. So if you're not chemist, organic chemist, so bear with me about this uh, whole thing. How to? <laughs> no. OK, I think I will do this. All right, first of all, let me acknowledge people who made contribution, uh, because I always uh, forgot at the end to acknowledge people uh, who made the contribution. And, uh, so this is a guy who made major contribution to this uh, program in our group, and uh, almost single-handedly started this project. Then all those students, postdocs, made a contribution. We made a uh, wonderful collaboration with a group in the Aga National Lab. And those are a founding agency and a company who uh, paid the bill for us. Now, organic materials are different from inorganic in many ways, especially polymers, because polymers uh, is a mixture of a different molecular weight, and uh, the polymer chain has a different length. Therefore, the band gap actually it's not well defined; it's not diffused, and. Uh, <coughs> So when you're trying to design organic materials for solar cell, when you started, you need to find something as a guideline to, to, to do all this research. And so we started from a very simple way, as everybody's doing that, using this so-called mechanism. I'm not sure this is the exact mechanism, but uh, it's roughly capturing the major uh, features in organic material. So what you need is an uh, inorganic solar cell. You need a donor and accept it. Either put them together by bilayer or mix them together by so-called bulk Kepler junction. The, the, the point is that you need to have a donor and acceptor close contact so that the charge can be separated. So when you have a donor, acceptor, and uh, neighboring each other, and either donor or acceptor molecules will be excited by absorbing photon, and the electron will be excited from homo to lumo, and if you have enough energy, like uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Nozick talked about, more, you know, energy, if it's too high, inorganic material, usually you have uh, internal relaxation from uh, high excitation state go to the uh, first excited state. So you have this uh, so-called X conformation. Then, uh, inorganic material, this axon has to migrate, if it's not in an interface, has to migrate to the interface to experience charge separation, so-called axon dissociation. And uh, this charge separation needs need some driving force in between the energy difference, homo and the lumo, lumo of donor and the lumo and the acceptor. After charge separation, you form bounded radical pair or charge transfer complex, this you need to do further dissociation. You have to pull them apart. Then you generate charge carrier. And this process, after you char charge carrier is generated, you have a charge transport along this uh, polymer uh, domain. Either donor and an acceptor depends on the nature of the charge carrier. And eventually it will be collected in, in uh, electrodes to generate the current. And from this picture, actually, you see many things required to design a good 
solar cell polymer. First of all, you need to have a polymer that has a low band gap because uh, this NH band gap has to match in the region with the most energy, solar energy flux. And uh, so low band gap is uh, required to capture a uh, large amount of the uh, solar energy. And you need uh, enough driving force for the charge separation. Turns out this is a very important. I will, I will take, uh, talk to you about this. And uh, then also you need to have a uh, balanced charge sharing mobility. So that's most important distinction between organic and inorganic because in a organic materials, charge transport actually going through hopping mechanism because it's basically organic radical, cationic radical, anionic, anionic radicals. Each species has lifetime in the molecules. Those molecules are individual molecules. And uh, so in order to let this uh, uh, charge carrier hopping from one to another, you have to overcome this uh, energy barrier and you have to uh, have some uh, certain lifetime in each molecule. So the, the feature is that mobility of the organic material is very low. And uh, therefore, that's another reason Org organic materials, solar cells, you only can emit very, very, very thin uh, film. And uh, that requires effective pi pi overlap so that charge carrying mobility can be enhanced. And then uh, further, you can see that in order to get high efficiency, you have to optimize open circuit voltage, which is determined by the homo energy level of donor, loma energy level of acceptor. And you want to have this as large as possible. That is limited by low band gap, because if you have low band gap, you enlarge this, the driving force will decrease. So those are quite a few things are just a uh, uh, conflict to each other. How to make a uh, synthesize a good polymers, you have to balance all those uh, uh, parameters synergistically. So that's uh, the point we started. And uh, now a little his historic view. Solar cell, uh, you, by using organic material, actually had the uh, breakthrough in 1986. Uh, Tang, who's in uh, Xerox, I think, in, uh, he published a paper in Applied Physics Letter by using a t double layer, donor and acceptor and double layers, and he's able to achieve 1% efficiency at that time. That's, that's a breakthrough, actually. And uh, then in uh, 1995, Alan Heger in uh, Santa Barbara, they published a work on uh, bulk Hepler junction systems. Instead of using a uh, double layer, they mix them together. It's like you have a two uh, door, you know, with a different color, you know, they mix them together and then uh, simply make this so called uh, bulk haplo junction solar cells. And uh, magically, turns out this is a nice uh, geometry, give you a very high efficiency. Then uh, another approach people tried, it didn't work so far, as far as I'm, I'm concerned as far as I know, is use so-called interdigited uh, system because you can see that in this bulk haplogenic junction system, charge transfer may not go through from here to there all the way to the electrodes. You have to go around to find a pathway, and that is not efficient. And uh, if you can have an interdigited system, the donor accept interface uh, area will be uh, large, and also the charge transport pathway will be short. So that's the idea, but so far, uh, not much success in this area. So our research is mainly focused on this system. And uh, uh, at year 2008, I think uh, we started working on this area for some time, but in that year we are able to develop a polymer which has, uh, I think, so far one of the best polymer systems. So this polymer has a, a structure like that. The design idea is that we introduced cyanosiphon units. This units, when coupled with another monomer, benzodiazepine, tend to have uh, uh, some kind of so-called conoidal structure because this polymer preferred to have some kind of resonance structure with uh, this single bond becomes a uh, double bond. Uh, it's not completely double bond. That means uh, electron delocalization actually 
is rather extensive. And that makes this polymer has narrow band gap. So that's the first design idea. Second design idea is that we introduced this benzodiazepine. We want to make sure pi pi stacking can be enhanced because this has a little bit larger pi system. Third design idea is to introduce this ester group. Turns out this is very crucial in understanding the, the uh, property, uh, structure property relationship. Initial idea we introduced this ester group is that the cyanocyphene unit is very unstable. It's electron rich and easily to be oxidized. So we think we should introduce an electron acceptor group to stabilize it. And it turns out that's uh, uh, very important. So we made this polymer. We can uh, fine tune many parameters of this polymers. For example, uh, you can uh, change the sulfur into selenium. You can change this ester group into other electron accepting group. You can introduce uh, fluorine atoms in those two pos uh, positions. And uh, this uh, benzodiazepine units can be changed into a larger or smaller pi system. So many parameters can be uh, changed. And all those systematic change actually can be used to fine tune the physical properties of polymers. For example, uh, when we introduced a fluorine atom into this position to replace a hydrogen, the homo energy level, lumo energy level can be uh, tuned. For example, if this is a, a hydrogen, homo energy level is 4.9, you change into fluorine, it becomes 5.1, right? 0.2 EV change. Those little change has a dramatic effect in a physical property or solar cell efficiency. So for example, uh, when we introduce one fluorine, and uh, <coughs> the efficiency actually changed from 4.9 uh, all the way to uh, 7.4. That's the results we had, we published in that 2000, uh, uh, end of 2009. And uh, so that value is uh, very uh, impressive at that time. And uh, you also can see that uh, those uh, uh, field factors, uh, solo, uh, the current and the VOC is uh, all uh, interesting. And uh, uh, so this polymer turns out, so far if after we do a lot of this uh, uh, device modification, we're able to push the efficiency to 9.4% efficiency in our lab. And that's a Chinese lab, uh, group. They bought this uh, uh, polymers from Canada. That's a company in Canada. They're manufacturing this polymer without my permission. And they're making a lot of money. And a half gram they're selling, I think, about $2,000. So I, I got nothing. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right. And uh, so they, they, they're able to sell to uh, the Chinese group. They're able to push this efficiency to 9.2%. So I'm, I'm happy about that, but at uh, the same time, you know, you spend so much time and uh, effort to develop a polymer, somebody just took it away to, to make a profit. OK, now as a scientist, you want to know why this polymer is so good. Right? We did a lot of uh, research on this initially, and we found out many reasons why those polymers are so good. First of all, the polymer has uh, almost optimal uh, band gap, about 1.6 EV, like a serial calculation by physicist in an inorganic, you said if it is 1.5, around 1.5, it should be optimized. So this one is a rather uh, optimized in as far as the band gap is concerned. And also the polymer has a very high planality. The, the evidence is that in a solution and a solid state, also a UV visible spectrum of this polymer is almost identical. If you think about the polysiphon, which has a dramatic shift, this is a solid state, this solution state, because uh, in a polysiphon, the siphon siphon linkage is a single bond. The single bond actually is rather uh, flexible. You can have a, a twist in a pi pi uh, plane structure. That's why you have this uh, <coughs> uh, shift in the spectrum. In our polymer, there's no shift. 
indicating that it's really a uh, planar structure because of the conoid uh, uh, systems. And also the mobility of a polymer is always uh, larger than the other polymers when we do measurement in our own lab. So that's another point, the polymer is good. Fourth point of this polymer is that uh, it has almost uh, ideal uh, morphology when, he, when it is mixed with uh, uh, C60, C70 as an acceptor. And you can see that the domain structure is very small, uh, small enough so that uh, the donor accept interface uh, has, is optimized. And, but the domain is large enough so that each domain will be connected so that a charge carrier can find a pathway and to be transported away to the electrodes. So that's another advantage. Furthermore, a polymer has a, a very efficient charge separation. Interestingly, even in a, a pristine polymer stage, when you shine light on it, it's already generated uh, cationic species, I mean a charge carrier. And uh, I think it's uh, caused by either defects or the, the, this aster group. But when you mix together with the PCBM, this charge separation become much more pronounced and uh, very fast. You know, less than uh, one picosecond, you already generate a large amount of the cation. And uh, further, another advantage of polymer, actually, this is the first time we observed, uh, is that the pi system actually tended to have uh, this face down on the electrodes. That's ideal for charge transport because in the solar cells, charge transport is, uh, uh, you want to have this uh, perpendicular to those electrodes. In a polysiphon, however, do it that way, just standing up. You have a arcuate chain uh, isolating each pi system, so you introduce resistance for that. And so, and that is a two, uh, 2D X-ray uh, scattering results. You can see that pi pi stacking uh, peak is in a Z direction which is indicating that uh, uh, it's a face down. So that, this is a kind of a polysiphon stacking on a substrate. This is our polymer system. Another important and also insightful information we can get is uh, from a, a magnetic field effect on photocurrent. Study on that effect. And uh, in collaboration with uh, Professor Bing Hu, who's in the uh, University of Tennessee. And what he f did is that he made a device and uh, measured the photocurrent and put that device in a, a, a magnetic uh, field. And what he found is that if it is a polysiphon, P3HT, magnetic field has dramatic effect. Initially, it will increase and then decrease. <clears throat> Our polymers, nothing. Basically, the magnetic field has no effect. So why is that? In a, when you uh, shine light on a solar cell film, charge will be generated by charge transfer and form a, uh, this uh, uh, charge transfer complex. That complex can exist in two states. One is a singlet, one is triplet. And if it is a singlet, magnetic field has no effect. If it is triplet, it will be pulled away, and then the charge carrier density can increase. But there's another possibility, that is, the charge transfer complex actually exists in very short time, or not at all. That means after charge separation, you generate charge carrier directly. Then the magnetic field will have no effect at all. And uh, so polysiphon, same uh, uh, the charge transfer complex exists in mainly as a triplet state because at low field, magnetic field, charge density increase, and at high field, you have more charge carrier. The charge carrier actually will react with the exciton that causes the exciton decay. And uh, so that current will decrease. In our case, we have further evidence, I will tell you later, that the main uh, species actually is free charge carrier. That means that is why the current uh, is not affected by <coughs> magnetic field. So that's another evidence for our polymers. Uh, nice things. And finally, 
another important effect is that because of this polymer has those ester group and uh, the polar group, therefore the dielectric constant of this polymer is actually is larger than uh, polysiphon, for example, and uh, consistently larger than polysiphon. Even you mix them together with uh, PCBN or, or this electron acceptor. So you can see that all those good properties come together in a single polymer system, make this polymer uh, almost uh, one of the best polymers in uh, solar cells. With that, we thought this polymer has the uh, potential, uh, can be used as a platform to do fine tuning by uh, synth uh, synthesis. And uh, so we modify the structures uh, systematically. For example, in this case, we're able to synthesize polymers containing selenium, replacing the sulfur atoms, and uh, four polymers with all sulfur or all selenium, or selenium here or selenium there. So we did all those, and turns out you have a problem because uh, selenium atom actually is large. The reason we introduced selenium is we expect those pi pi interaction can be enhanced because of the large pi, uh, atom size. So therefore, the charge uh, carrier mobility can be enhanced. And uh, it turns out that may not be the best thing you can do. Because when you enhance the uh, uh, pi pi stacking, actually polymer becomes insoluble. And uh, therefore, you need to introduce a large uh, side group so that the pi pi distance can be uh, uh, extend a little bit more, and then uh, eventually, overall, the polymer efficiency we can get is only about 6.8% compared with 7.4% uh, we had previously. And so that is not good. Then we're also trying to increase the pi system, the size of pi uh, core monomer, and like introduce this one. Again, the same problem, because uh, pi system increase solubility of the polymer uh, decrease. And uh, so those strategy seems uh, has a contradictory effect. And uh, eventually, we come to a very important system shown here. That give us uh, 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 ideas or insight about the structure property relationship. That is a fluorination. And uh, as you already see previously, we synthesized one polymer with one fluorine in this position. Efficiency can be enhanced from 5% uh, to 7.4%. And we become ambitious that uh, if we introduce more, we should be able to increase further. So we synthesized the four polymers. One has no fluorine. Another has one fluorine here. A third one has a two fluorine here, hydrogen here. And uh, the last one is all fluorinated. Those four polymers give us a very interesting lesson. Because, uh, and uh, indeed, those fluorinations systematically will change the homoloma energy gap, uh, energy level. So zero fluorine, one fluorine, two fluorine, three fluorine. The homo energy level decrease. So is the lumo energy level, right? It seems good because when you decrease the homo energy levels, the, the VOC can be enhanced. And, uh, but when we do solar cell measurements, what we found is that one fluorine polymer is the best, zero fluorine is second. You have a two fluorine efficiency decrease. When you introduce a, a three fluorine, the efficiency is decreased further. And what's the reason? Initially, we thought it is caused by morphology change because uh, whenever a fluorine atom introduced into the polymer chain, the compatibility with the C60, C70 become uh, decreased because uh, so-called the fluorophobicity. And indeed, when you uh, look at the morphology, the one for a uh, zero fluorine, one fluorine has a better morphology. When you have a two and a zero, uh, three fluorines, morphology become uh, deteriorated the domain size become larger, which is bad because exoton migration has a limitation because each exoton has lifetime. When it migrate, if the distance of migration to the interface is too long, the exoton will decay. 
right, converting into heat. So you have to optimize morphology. But that's not the main reason, actually. We can optimize that by adding different uh, additive uh, in the solvent, make this domain smaller or close to that. The efficiency is still not up to this level. So must have some other reason. And uh, what we think the reason actually is come from this ultra-fast spectroscopy study. We collaborated with uh, Professor Ling Chen at Argonne National Lab, Northwestern University. And uh, we investigated charge separation dynamics. And let me refresh you, refresh you your um, uh, memory about this uh, whole process. You excite uh, polymers from uh, uh, HOMO to LUMO, and uh, you generate X tone. This, this X tone can undergo charge separation to donor and form this bound electrical pair or charge transfer complex. This charge transfer complex has to be further dissociated to form charge carrier, polycation. All those three species actually can be detected by uh, spectroscopy. And uh, of course, those uh, species has different lifetimes, external from femtosecond, bound electrical pair, picosecond to nanosecond, charge carriers in microsecond. And uh, so from those measurements, we, sh we are able to distill out some uh, uh, insight information. And so here's a, a spectrum, right? This is an initial excitation. It's an x tone peak around here. And after 100, uh, uh, about a 300 femtosecond, you generate a uh, charge transfer complex. Actually, a charge uh, cationic peak when the polymer is uh, zero fluorine and uh, one fluorine here. So this is a process, exotone to cation, less than uh, 300 femtosecond. However, if you introduce two fluorine and a three fluorine atom into those polymer chain, mixed together with uh, C70, exotone will be dissociated into bound electrical pit. That means charge transfer complex is the dominating species for those polymer. And uh, here's the dynamics, right? So when you have a zero fluorine, the exotone increase dramatically in a very short period of time, then decay very fast. And uh, this red curve is a cationic peak Concentration will increase uh, significantly and maintain that high concentration. And this is a one fluorine atom. Uh, you can see that X tone decay become extremely fast. And uh, cationic species has a high concentration. And uh, this blue curve is a bound electrical pair. You can see that concentration is low. However, if, if you introduce two fluorine atom, you can see that major peak actually is a bound electrical pair. And uh, uh, the exotone decay is fast, but uh, cationic species concentration is low. And uh, when you have a three fluorine, this is a uh, cationic uh, species concentration increase a little bit. I will tell you why. So from this, you can see that zero or one fluorine is important, right? What's the reason? And, uh, can see that this result is consistent with the magnetic field effect. You can see that in our polymer with a one fluorine or zero fluorine, it's a major con uh, contribution is uh, from charge uh, carrier. And uh, the reason we thought initially is because this polymer has uh, one fluorine here or zero fluorine, this unit has a dipole. We thought when you introduce a fluorine, the dipole moment of that monomer unit should increase, right? And that larger dipole can help charge separation. And so that's an initial idea. If we thought, so we thought if that's the case, we can uh, do some polymers to confirm this idea. We introduced the two units in a neighboring to each other so that the dipole will be canceled to each other. And uh, this polymer actually turns out to be a very nice polymer. All those other properties is better than that. And for example, the uh, optical absorption curves for the red shifted 
covers even broader uh, solar spectrum. Morphology is uh, ideal, but the solar efficiency is very uh, poor. And you can see that this external quantum efficiency spectrum, one fluorine, zero fluorine, two fluorine, and this dipole cancel the system. And so that sequence seems consistent with the dipole moment because, uh, so this uh, efficiency uh, data, you can see that the one fluorine, zero fluorine, two fluorine, dipole canceled one. And uh, so we did calculation on the dipole in ground state of the repeating unit of uh, polymer. We cannot do whole polymer calculation. And uh, so we select the repeating unit, and the dipole moment seems consistent because one fluorine is the largest, zero fluorine the second, two fluorine decrease, and dipole cancel the one is uh, smaller. But at the same time, we also found the dipole change between ground state and the excited state also consistent with that. And uh, one fluorine that has largest change, zero fluorine the second, and the two fluorine is smaller, and the dipole canceled the one is smaller. So it seems they're both consistent. So in order to distinguish which one is uh, playing the major role, we synthesized a series of different polymers. And uh, uh, before that, we did the calculation. They have a, a very much different dipole moment in our repeating units. And also, a large, the dipole moment change is uh, different. And it turns out the efficiency, this polymer, for example, that's this one, has the largest dipole, about a seven, but the efficiency is the smallest. At the same time, the dipole moment change is the smallest. So when I plot this uh, solar cell efficiency as a function of dipole change, I found some, some kind of seemingly linear relationship. So that indicating the dipole change between ground state and excited state is a major point. And uh, that seems uh, understandable based on this uh, model. So when you have a mixture of uh, polymer and C60, C7, uh, C70, it's randomly distributed. Then polymer chain can have a stacking with another polymer chain. And uh, this C60, C70 are randomly distributed. When you excite this polymer, axon will be formed. Because of the polarization, charge will be polarized in a, a electron density in the polymer. So positive charge will be around this uh, uh, benzodiazepin units, and negative charge will be around this uh, uh, cyanocyphin units because the electron deficient. And then the charge separation, we believe, will occur from this unit to the neighboring C60, C70, right? And uh, immediately after charge separation, the positive charge and the negative charge distance is large in this scenario. But if you introduce two fluorine atoms in this benzodiazepin units, fluorine atoms electron withdrawing doesn't like positive charge, will push positive charge density towards this unit. Therefore, the electron a whole pair, the distance decrease, the binding energy between electron a whole pair increase. That's why you, you observe bonded lattical pair in those, those systems. And because of that, in this polymer system, you have a better chance to have charge recombination. The efficiency therefore decrease. So that's a picture we get uh, last year. And uh, more recently, we're trying to prove one thing. That is, if that linear relationship exists, if you can synthesize a polymer with an even larger dipole change, you should be able to approach 10% efficiency quickly. And so we did that. We synthesized one polymer uh, with a sulfone and a, uh, this is actually, it's a sweetener and it's known unit. And uh, then we also synthesized uh, this polymer according to the approach developed by several groups. It's not our polymer. One of the polymer, I think it was uh, by Professor, he's here in the, in the audience. So we did the calculation. This polymer has a dipole change about a five. This polymer has about seven. So we measured 
the efficiency. And what we found is that it didn't go all the way up. A lot of it decreased. So what does that mean? That means dipole change actually uh, not as large as possible. What's the reason? There's a couple of reasons. The first reason is that maybe when we introduce a stronger electron withdrawing group, actually that electron withdrawing group play the role as charge trapping center. Electron that will be happily stayed in that site will not move. Another one is that maybe similar to Marcos theory. And is that true? And uh, so now power conversion efficiency actually didn't reflect the, the dynamics. We thought if you want to discuss the Marcos theory, charge transfer uh, kinetics, we have to use a uh, uh, current density, right? That is more relevant. So we decided to plot this PCE as a function of uh, driving force, which is uh, energy, normal energy difference between two polymers and the PCBM. We found this kind of a relationship. It's very much similar to Marcos series inverted region. Then we plot this uh, current density as a function of uh, this energy driving force difference and you can fit that with Marcos theory, almost. And uh, this is a Marcos theory. The free energy difference driving force is here. Delta E, Luma energy difference. And that seems, looks like that. Now what's the implication of that? That means maybe the polymer solar cell efficiency, as far as in the, this is simplest device, I think it's already optimized. That means uh, to synthesize a new structure may not help to enhance that. The, the focus should be on a, a device fabrication to optimize the device so that you can uh, push all those things up so that uh, efficiency can be increased. So that is uh, some insight we gained. Now, the problem is the Lumo energy level calculation actually is not easy. Of several order of magnitude could, and uh, but dipole calculation, dipole change calculation can be rather uh, uh, easy, and therefore that give us, especially give organic chemist, uh, some kind of handle before you invoke a lengthy synthesis. You usually, you know, develop a new polymer take a month, uh, several month uh, research effort to do. Eventually, you wind up a very uh, poor performance, that's not uh, the best way to do. So therefore, we can uh, now do calculation first, then do the synthesis. Usually that seems working. All right, how much time do I have? 15 more minutes? Okay, all right, I think I prepared enough material to cover that time. All right, okay. Now, if that, indeed Marcos theory works, right? Like we, we think it uh, work. And uh, we have some way to, to improve the polymer solar cell efficiency. One idea is that when we look at the hormone energy level of PTB7, that's the best polymer we have, with the PCBM, the energy difference is about uh, uh, almost a one point uh, one point EV, that's too large. Because remember, in this curve, you, you, you got about an optimized efficiency around 0 0.4, 0 0.5 EV in uh, <coughs> energy difference. So 1.0 EV in a whole low energy level between this and the C70 is too large, even though the Luma energy level is optimized. Then we said, what will happen if we introduce another third component, polymer with this? And that will make this energy difference smaller and also this energy difference smaller. It's the kind of a bridge or relay for charge transport. So that's a ternary system. And indeed, what we found is that you can uh, introduce about 10% of this polymer into this system with a C70. The efficiency can be enhanced. So this is a pure polymer, PCBM, about 7.2.
10% of the third point components, you got 8.2% efficiency. And if you increase this uh, further, then the efficiency decreases because the third polymer efficiency is very poor, 2.5. And that same standard is an example indicating that uh, too late insightful information about the structure property relationship can help to improve the efficiency or device performance too. And uh, I think I will skip this one. Another example, we just published this results, is uh, we also do a little bit device optimization because we have the best polymer and we also want to uh, do some of this uh, device physics study. One effect we found is interesting, could be helpful to many uh, OPV people, is that if you introduce uh, gold and a silver nanoparticle in uh, this P dot layer, you can uh, get enhancement for the device. For example, this is known because uh, you introduce gold nanoparticle, you get the 10% efficiency enhancement. Silver got another 10% efficiency enhancement because of uh, either prosmonic effect or, or scattling effect. And But what we found is that if you introduce both, even though you optimized, you, you got a two uh, nanoparticle in this uh, layer, you got a double enhancement. So this is the results. Uh, that's the results here. Uh, so this is a pure PTB7 polymer, 7.2. And uh, gold give you 8.1. Silver give, give you 7.9, roughly 10%. But if you use both, you got 8.6% efficiency enhancement, 20% uh, efficiency enhancement. And what's the reason? The reason is that those two nanoparticles has a two different uh, prosmonic absorption peak. One is in a short wavelength for the silver, gold is uh, in a uh, larger uh, wavelength. And uh, that means you got a double prosmonic effect. And uh, this effect actually can be seen with simply using single gold nano rod because gold nano rod has two modes. One is a longitudinal and a traverse uh, mode and at the different wavelengths. And we also got 20% efficient, uh, efficiency enhancement. So that's a, it's a very simple way uh, to make a device work better. And uh, So finally, we also found that we can use a small amount of carbon nanotube to enhance the solar efficiency. And uh, so for example, we found that uh, we can uh, spin coat uh, either boron or nitrogen doped carbon nanotube into the device. Only nitrogen doped uh, carbon nanotube, but multiple carbon nanotube can enhance the efficiency. And uh, the interesting thing is that those carbon nanotubes, 1.5 percent, you spin coat it. It's long uh, carbon nanotube. But I don't understand why they all stand up. Actually, it's so perpendicular to the film. You can see that all those carbon nanotubes spark out. And if you enhance the concentration beyond 1.5 percent, then the device efficiency decrease. And uh, so. What we found is that uh, the best results we got is about, uh, I didn't have that uh, table, is about 9.4% uh, efficiency by using carbon nanotube with a nitrogen dope uh, systems. And uh, the reason for that enhancement, one is that this perpendicular mode actually will make the charge collection much efficient, right? Second reason is that after you put carbon nanotube into the film, the film domain become smaller and uh, also become more crystalline, right? Actually, domain become larger. And uh, so it seems that the carbon nanotube has a kind of a temperate effect, make the pi, uh, polymer pi pi stacking enhanced. and. Uh, also, the external generation efficiency increase, 
and charge dissociation efficiency increase. We, had, we did all those uh, studies. So for example, the charge uh, generation efficiency with carbon nanotube increased from 8.2 to 9.2. The charge uh, dissociation efficiency increased from 8.8 .8 to 93%. Uh, and uh, so the reason is shown here, actually. Carbon nanotube has a uh, uh, low more, uh, let's see, this is a carbon nanotube here. So what happened is that carbon nanotube has low more energy level lower than low more energy level of the C70. So electron can uh, transfer from polymer low more to C60, C70, then further deliver to carbon nanotube and then quickly be uh, uh, transported out to the electrodes. And uh, so that, I think uh, I will stop by summarizing. You can see that uh, detailed study of uh, polymer solar cell, even though it's very complex systems, can give you some kind of a structure property relationship. And this relationship can guide you to search for new polymers. And uh, overall, I think this is a, a, a unique system, actually, to demonstrate the Marcos theory in inverted re region. I think not many examples for this uh, inverted uh, region charge transfer system, but uh, this seems to be the one of them. And, uh, and also, the calculation of dipole change in repeating units of polymer can help to predict roughly, I'm not saying accurately, roughly whether this polymer is good or bad because you know there's so many parameters actually affect the solar cell efficiency but uh, dipole change seems is uh, can be used as a guideline uh, for the polymer design anyway uh, i think that's uh, the, the all i want to tell you and i thank you for your attention <laughs>